and growth whether in personal capacity or in or at a social or community level leadership comes in all forms and it is this belief of ours that has led us to curate various programs around it uh, i hope everybody is able to hear me can you just put in the chat box if you are able to hear me all right great i'll go ahead so whether leap which is all about mentoring corporate women professionals or we the change which is about individuals who are founders of social on uh, social enterprises and creating a larger community impact or managers both male and female in professional parlance who are looking to accelerate, accelerate their leadership skills by being fearless authentic and effective i think beyond diversity truly nurtures and champions the cause of leadership mentoring and diversity and inclusion so today we have an interesting topic up for discussion win in 2020 approach with an entrepreneurial mindset and we have with us shilpa ajwani an entrepreneur herself to take us through the session and also share what does an entrepreneurial mindset mean why is it a critical skill in today's and considering future of work and also how she can share her own learnings anecdotes and experiences of being and from being an entrepreneur herself it gives me a great pleasure to introduce shilpa ajwani our speaker today shilpa is the ceo of dono mantra a business consultancy firm specializing in consumer centric lifestyle businesses in beauty fashion wellness and healthcare food and beverages homeware and contemporary living to grow faster shilpa is a seasoned social selling expert with a solid reputation for providing transformative leadership to leading top multinational corporations She has more than two decades of experience in taking brands from startup to scale and being profitable enterprises. So, a warm welcome to you, Shilpa. Thank you so much for your time, uh, and thank you so much for joining us for the webinar today. Thank you, Nancy. Um, thanks for that wonderful introduction. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, we are still in the first month of a new year, so wish everybody a winning twenty twenty already. So Nancy, we're good to go. Should I get started? Yes, we will start. Just to reiterate, I mean, all the participants are well aware of the format of webinar, but just a quick reiteration. Uh, Shilpa will begin her session shortly, and post that we will try to take one pause, uh, you know, to get in few questions from the participants, and we'll also stop uh, once at the end of Shilpa's session to be able to take questions from you. my request again will be to make it as interactive as possible no question should is uh, silly or not to be asked please feel free to type in the chat boxes and i shall take them to shilpa thank you so much over to you shilpa thanks nancy um so everyone my name is shilpa ajwani once again ceo of unom bantra um but when i talk to you today it is really trying to curate almost 25 years of corporate experience but i have had the privilege of working both as an entrepreneur and now as an entrepreneur as well um i have nurtured almost more than 500000 entrepreneurs during my professional journey and i think that itself has been a learning experience um i'm seen as a pioneer in the d2c space in the country and even as an entrepreneur um uh, today i can really look back on my journey as an intrapreneur which means someone who was working inside of multinational organizations but with a wide exposure to global business practices in countries such as ours india but also indonesia china thailand vietnam amongst others here i got the experience of building global brands and enterprises from startup to scale and then when we saw so much of disruption all around us my job responsibility really even changed to that of business transformation model after model started getting disruptive and and that's where uh, one could see that spirit of entrepreneurship getting unleashed even inside of legacy traditional organizations i have um, also had the excitement of seeing businesses at the 30 feet level and at the 30000 feet level all the way uh, you know from behaving and being uh, a project manager getting into the micro details of making things work 
um, to also seeing the business as a managing director and CEO uh, from a 30,000 feet perspective uh, and a more strategic perspective at large. Um, along this journey, I think I've been blessed to be recognized for the efforts um, and the, the attempts at, at really keeping things innovative, fast paced and result oriented, um, both when I was uh, a follower following leaders and then when I became a leader myself as well. Early 2019, I decided to turn entrepreneur myself when I founded Uno Mantra, my own business consulting firm, uh, with a purpose to support the young founders, entrepreneurs, professionals of today. And exactly they are the ones I'm working with because I feel the young brands of today will be the mega brands and the multinationals of tomorrow. So, so this has been a very interesting journey, a journey full of, uh, I would say, ups, downs, learning, successes, setbacks. Um, and, and today, when I talk to you, I think that's what I will try to distill almost 25 years of experience um, in the context of really building an entrepreneurial mindset and understanding more how to win with that in the year 2020. So as um, I said that, uh, you know, this is really going to be uh, the focus of what we will be discussing today. And uh, let's start with the agenda. So what I want to really talk to you first about will be to introduce to you what, what is an entrepreneurial mindset. It's a term we hear very often these days. Um, I will choose to abbreviate it as EM throughout my session. Um, but very importantly, I would like uh, to, to give you some tips on when you see it, how to recognize that it's entrepreneurial mindset that you are seeing. The second thing that we will talk about today will be that who are some people we can learn from, get inspired. And it's really about seeing EM in action um, so that they can be very tangible takeaways for you out of this session today. Uh, which will benefit you when you start to implement that in your own life and in career. The third thing is really to, to dig a little bit deeper in terms of why do I need an entrepreneurial mindset? I work inside of an organization today. I'm an employee. Um, but this is where I would really want to urge everybody to, to take notice when I, I start to talk about this aspect. Because it doesn't matter today whether you are a founder of a startup um, an entrepreneur or a budding entrepreneur or an employee inside of an organization. The times are such, the dynamism of our ecosystem is such that we all need to build EM and an urgently so. And lastly, I'll give you some concrete tips and some advice on how you could develop EM and win with that in this new year. And of course, question and answers in the end. So without much ado, let's jump straight in into understanding what is EM. And, and here I would really like to define this for you. And this is my definition. I know entrepreneurship schools have their own definitions, institutions, uh, experts when you will talk to. But what I've decided to do for you today is curate my own definition. And this is really based upon observations. Observations of real life successful people coming from different backgrounds, coming from different professions, but every one of them um, I observed as, as really showing um, these traits. And, and that to me really is, um, you know, entrepreneurial mindset at its best. So, so let's understand my definition and then I'll break it up for you to make it more real. So EM to me is a way of thinking that allows an individual to smell possibilities before others, seize opportunities, which often come disguised as problems and embrace challenges with accountability to find innovative solutions with a relentless enthusiasm to learn and a sense of adventure. So as to add value to a situation, persons, or even to one's own self. Now, as I break this for you, um, you know, what I highlighted first was that it is all about smelling possibilities before others. 
And this is something that I, I have seen that, you know, individuals who have exhibited EM, as per me, are always more observant. They are always smelling things, um, identifying opportunities, and not just identifying, but then seizing them and acting upon them um, to really find solutions before others can. So, so it's really about, um, you know, studying trends, being observant to the signals all around us. And believe you me, when we look closely, there is so much that we can find um, and learn from. And that's where, you know, there is this pattern that I have observed that they constantly are able to see gaps, uh, which are actually opportunities where other people can't see anything. Um, so that's one, one very important aspect of, of somebody who exhibits EM. Um, the other thing is that they not only smell these opportunities, but they actually seize them. And, you know, they, they are quick at acting upon them and leveraging on them before others do. Um, so that's also pretty unique in a lot of these people that, you know, many people start to see that they are lucky. But honestly, what luck is, it's actually identifying and seizing opportunities before other people. And the third thing is that what's the attitude with which they approach life or whatever that they are doing, whether it's a job or it's a business. Um, they are somebody who are open to challenges. Um, and when they, you know, look at challenges, they don't look at, uh, you know, these as, as stumbles or setbacks or disappointments or, or, you know, difficulties. They really look at a challenge really like a challenge should be looked at. Um, it's challenging you to, to be somebody bigger and better. And they do so with accountability, which means that they, they love to take responsibility. They are owners of uh, really finding the solution to that particular challenge. And that's where I think what they exhibit is that infectious enthusiasm, um, curiosity. They're always asking questions. And life is, is more or less like an adventure for them. It's not drudgery, but it's really living from one moment to the next, learning, engaging, and finding solutions. And when they do that, they tend to add value, not just to themselves, but to all the others around them as well. And that's where, um, you know, they start getting recognition. People uh, love to be in the midst of such people. And, and we tend to see them as more successful than this. Um, so, so let me give you some concrete words, adjectives. Um, if you meet a person um, or even you see yourself, look at this more like a checklist that, you know, what are some of the traits that I have? Uh, you know, based on what I will just sort of share with you. And, and what are some of the things I've seen in people around me um, who exhibit an EM or who don't? So the first thing which is very prominent and very common is the fact that they all have reason. They have a sense of purpose. Um, they know why are they doing something. And that's where I feel that when such people put in their efforts at something, they're very intentional about it. Nothing about it is really random or just by chance. Um, so, so that's one thing which already puts them at an advantage versus the others who start looking at things, but without really any big sense of purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. so that's one thing which is uh, rare, but, but common when you look at people who exhibit EM. The second is rich thinking. And when I say rich thinking, it is not just about thinking big, but it is also thinking creatively and thinking in a solution oriented way. And that's where it's wonderful to brainstorm with such people because all the time their vocabulary is about even challenging, you know, the person sitting in front of them, of course, challenging themselves. And as a result, uh, always coming up with bigger, bolder, plans uh, of doing things and making things happen. The third thing is that they are uh, relentless, which means that they just don't give up. Um, and, and that's one great quality. Normally, we always advise people who are in sales, you know, to be relentless. But, but this is, you know, something which these people exhibit, irrespective of which function, which division, which department they are a part of. 
um, or whether they run a business or work in an organization. Um, the, the feeling that I just need to do this till it is done, um, I think that's what makes them um, winners a lot of the times. But not all the times. And that's where they also face, uh, you know, setbacks, um, failures. Uh, but, but they rebound back. And I think that's also an extremely important quality that you would see in yourself, perhaps also in the people who exhibit EM, um, that they would have the courage to face things head on and then to come back um, from that setback even stronger. Um, the other uh, one I want to really talk about is resourceful. Now, these are people who may not have a lot, but they make a lot out of whatever they have, which means whether it is financial resources, uh, human resources, any other kind of resources that they have, their own skill sets, their own talents, their own energy, time. They are very resourceful about maximizing these to give them the best output. They're also seen to be rapid learners. Um, when caught in a new situation, um, they are very quick to adapt. <clears throat> and they show that agility um, to learn and then act on it. Another word which is a big favorite of mine is responsibility. What I've seen these people do is not only just show a response, but take full responsibility. So one is that they don't run away or shirk away when uh, situations get tough. Um, they definitely stand up and give a response, but they also do that with a lot of ownership. Um, Risk-taking appetite, I think this is one thing which is also common, whether being the first one to go bungee jumping when a group of friends uh, decided to do so, um, or when they land up in a completely new city, just throwing their bags in the hotel room and saying, let's go out and then see the city rather than sleeping in. I think, you know, they exhibit these things in small ways and definitely big ways. Very result focused as well. And last but not the least, very restless and impatient. Um, sometimes this is not a great quality because, you know, these people then don't tend to follow a lot of processes, uh, have the um, patience for systems. But, you know, what we can get done with that enthusiasm, with that result focus, with their ability to take risks, and to be relentless in the pursuit just sort of makes up for, for a lot of these uh, cons that such a personality might exhibit as well. So now out of these 10, you know, have a reflection as to what do you have, which you think could be your strong EM oriented traits and what is it that you would love to develop and why? And as you're thinking about this, I would like um, to actually introduce you to four different type of personalities. Um, when we talk about entrepreneurial mindset, I think it could be easy to take the biggest, the richest, the Bill Gates, the Jeff Bezos, the Jack Ma's, the Ambani's. But what I have for you are four people who also inspire me a lot uh, because they are so different in the way that they began their life's journey and where they are today and what they've created just because they exhibited an entrepreneurial mindset through and through. The first one is the founder of the Virgin Group, Sir Richard Branson. Um, he's somebody who, you know, has an interesting journey. Many of us may not know that he is actually a high school dropout. Um, he's dyslexic um, and came from a fairly standard middle-class background. Um, and today he's one of the best known business tycoons. He's a serial entrepreneur and has 300 businesses to his credit. Um, how did he do all that? I think when one asks him, um, there are a few things which really um, stand out in, in what he says. And I would love to share that with you today. And I think they resonate all the traits I spoke about and even more. I think what he always recommends is, is to surround yourself with achievers. And this is something that I have personally experienced as well, that the most successful people who really have that entrepreneurial zeal, um, whether again, they are in business or not, but they have that zeal uh, and they have that mindset. They are the ones who are always hanging out with achievers. They are always making friends with people um, who've done more or achieved much more than they have. 
And this is one thing Sir Richard Branson highly recommends. And if today you look at who he moves around with, of course, a lot of people want to be with him. But, but the people he chooses to be with are always people who are different. Uh, sometimes they are younger, they are thinking differently, or they belong to a different business, um, or they could be political and world leaders, spiritual leaders. And these are people that, that, you know, help him to become a much more fuller person. And he's hungry to get all that information. The second is that he recommends, you know, cultivating a large appetite for life in general. Not just about, you know, money or um, assets, um, but, but really an appetite about getting the most out of every moment. And that is where you can see him um, at the age of 70. Uh, getting ready to go to the deepest level of the ocean in a submarine or getting ready to go and fly out into space. Um, his businesses are expanding by the day and, and getting into territories which are amazingly new, innovative um, and, and technologies which the world hasn't even seen yet. Um, so even as a 70-year-old grandfather, uh, you can see him uh, doing amazing things. His appetite uh, for, for being creative, for having fun, um, facing adventure, sometimes even life-threatening adventure. I think that's something that he throws himself at. And these are actually values of the Virgin Group as well, fun and adventure, and he lives them by the day. So for a man today who owns his own island, the Necker Island where he lives, um, he's attracting a lot of people towards himself. But it isn't that he did not go through setbacks. But I think where he's become very good at is smelling those opportunities before other people and acting on it while having fun and being passionate about whatever he's doing. So this is one example where I felt that we can have a lot of learnings which we can apply to our everyday lives as well. The other example is very interesting. It's a very recent example of, of a big success. This is Falguni Nair, as you may know now, founder and CEO of Nika, a multi-brand cosmetic, beauty, wellness, e-commerce portal. Um, Falguni had been uh, working as a professional. She was an investment uh, you know, banker and merchant with Kotak Mahindra for good 18 years when she decided to take the leap into entrepreneurship at the age of 50, um, everybody was very surprised. And when she you know, told them what she was going to do, they were shocked. And, and the best of her friends said, Falguni, don't do it. Um, so you know, when I asked her, and I happened to, of course, speak with her as well, uh, you know, uh, what, what got her going when there was so much of negativity around her, naysayers, people sort of pushing her back. Um, I think some of the answers I got was that, uh, you know, she said, don't listen to anyone when you are determined and you are confident that this is the path forward for you. Um, of course, you know, you, you could you know, take in viewpoints, but ultimately you have to have that strength of going ahead and doing what is really yours. And the the second thing is uh, what she said was that, uh, you know, technology was something completely new to her. And uh, in terms of giving scale to a big and unknown and new business. And this is something which I think was very amazing. She said that, you know, I discovered digital marketing so late in my life. But when I discovered it, I absolutely loved it. And then she said that this is something, um, you know, which, which also kept triggering her to push forward because the more she started to learn a new subject and she saw the real gains of applying that to her business immediately, um, she said that gave her a big high. So even at the age of 50, uh, with no background in beauty, um, no background really in um, running a technology e-commerce portal. Um, she learned all those skills and today manages them. Of course, unlike Sir Richard Branson, who was a high school dropout, she comes from IIM Ahmedabad, uh, very astute and detailed in understanding financial plans, business plans. But whereas Sir Richard Branson decided to make up for his uh, weaknesses, being dyslexic, he said, I was very quick to delegate. So whether dyslexia was a weakness or became a strength was in his hands. For Falguni, 
not coming from a beauty background, not coming from running e-commerce portals in her lifetime as a professional. She decided to really learn and very quickly uh, adapt that learning into making business sense out of it. So she used, um, you know, the, the benefit of not knowing something, but being open to changing, absorbing and acting on that. And today she's created a Sunicorn. And many people say that's going to be a unicorn very, very quickly. Thousand brands, uh, you know, on her portal. And she's not giving up. She started Nika Luxury. She's started, uh, you know, the offline channel now. She's getting into lifestyle and fashion. Um, so that's another thing that once you uh, taste success, there's no reason to stop. You can go on and on. The third example is that of an entrepreneur. He is the late uh, YC Deveshwar, legendary, uh, iconic uh, in uh, his leadership, in his strategic vision. Um, he was the executive chairman and CEO. And by the way, he is India's longest serving CEO. Um, he was also a Padma Bhushan recipient um, and someone who could have just stayed a leader running a cigarettes business, uh, which in any case was facing a whole lot of regulatory compliance issues. He had enough headaches on his head um, to, to you know, be bogged down and not really smell what's happening around the corner. But he chose to do this differently. He understood the current uh, you know, category uh, would have its limitations to growth. The way consumer activism was coming in, government activism was coming against the category. He said something had to be done and fast. And that's where um, he went against the grain, really looked at, okay, what could be the big businesses of tomorrow? What does the domestic market uh, tell us to do? And, and that's where he started to dream of converting ITC into a big FMCG, a giant competing with the likes of Unilever, PNG, and the other established uh, giants in this field. And it was amazing how with just his persistence, he was able to make sure um, that his dream ca came true. Um, IDC today, of course, is uh, a multi-dimensional conglomerate, not just known for, his, uh, for the cigarettes business, but really into agribusiness, paper, infotech, personal care, F&B, um, you name it and, and they have, uh, you know, a vertical going there and successfully so. Um, a doctors of technology, um, really a very traditional Indian group uh, with a traditional product line, um, experimenting and transforming their business, starting with, uh, you know, the thinking at the top. Um, and it isn't that they did not go through their issues. I think uh, they've been through enough and more, but that vision. Uh, allows one to be stubborn and to to continue even in the face of a lot of dire circumstances, big competition, uh, big multinational players uh, with deep pockets and experience. Um, I think, you know, his entrepreneurship and he was working inside of that organization all the while um, showed that you can have an EM even while working as uh, somebody inside of an organization as well. Um, a very, very impressive example. Um, and the next one is uh, someone, of course, we all know her, Oprah Winfrey. Um, the story is very interesting and, and probably many of you have, you know, heard of it before. Um, this is something which I bring up today because most people I know wouldn't see Oprah as an entrepreneur. They would see her as a television host. They would see her as a media personality. They would see her even as a philanthropist today. But very few would, would you know, think that this achievement really comes for her because of her exhibiting EM so very much. Oprah was born into poverty. Um, and, uh, and for somebody who saw abuse in her early years, um, harsh poverty, no access to um, good education. Um, she's somebody who has gone on to become one of the most influential women in the world, um, recipient of uh, big, big awards, uh, global awards as well. Um, she became the um, richest um, African-American origin woman 
in, in all of US. Um, and she's not stopping here. Even in 2020, as the year began, at the age of 65, she's doing a nine city tour um, for the organization called Weight Watchers, uh, which she joined on the board in 2015. So she is constantly reinventing herself, um, uh, getting to, to be around different people, different uh, thought processes, different industries. And today she has, based on the power of the deep relationships that she has formed all these years, um, been able to get people to not only come on her shows, uh, but to really, you know, turn up when she has these big events, uh, when she has to go out and, and give, uh, you know, huge charitable uh, contributions for really good causes. Mm -hmm. There are people who galvanize uh, towards her because of the relationships that she has been able to form. Um, Oprah went through, of course, a lot of setbacks even in her professional journeys. She saw a lot of rejection, as you can imagine, being an African-American woman. So, so everything which could have gone against her could have gone against her had she been not that relentless and resilient in bouncing back stronger and better each time and also catching hold of opportunities um, to, to bring her best version out. Um, and once she had that, again, to add value back to the others. So I think, you know, with these four examples, um, it's, it's a way to reflect that what can I do in my life as I start a new year um, with some goals, with some resolutions, uh, with my personality, with whatever I think I have as my, my strengths and my improvement areas. What can I do differently uh, to really exhibit that entrepreneurial mindset? Um, at this point, we could take a, a break to see, Nancy, if there are any questions people have. Um, and if not, then I'm happy to, to take this forward to the sure. next one. Sure. Thanks, Shilpa, for uh, the, you know sharing brilliant examples and also very concise uh, definition of uh, EM. We'll wait for people to type in questions. So participants, please put in your questions in the chat box. Uh, we can have Shilpa answer them and then uh, she can continue with the session again. All right, so Shilpa, it doesn't seem like people have questions. So maybe we could continue. And uh, people are saying they want to hear more and probably then they'll have some more questions. So why don't you continue and we'll take a pause later on. Excellent, works for me. So let's continue um, to the next important question. And many people ask me this all the time when I'm talking about entrepreneurship, uh, especially that, that why is it important to develop EM especially if I'm a professional working inside of an organization or I have no plans to, to really start my own business anytime soon. Um, so here I would really like to reiterate that EM is a mindset. Um, it can become a way of life, something which really serves you well, irrespective of even if you are a homemaker. Um, right. Um, so, so let's not box ourselves in and then say that it only applies to people who are entrepreneurs or any of us who are going to be entrepreneurs. Um, I think it's uh, so handy, even in winning in everyday life situations. And why? Um, especially today, because we all find ourselves living in the VUCA world, right, where it's become volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Um, here I'll give you my um, own example as well that uh, when I was leading Tupperware, um, you know, the business model that had held good for almost 70 years suddenly came under a lot of, um, um, I would say, uh, questioning and, and people started to engage with the brand or wanted to engage with the brand very, very differently. Uh, on one hand. Secondly, the whole conversation around plastic became, uh, you know, larger than life and all of a sudden. 
and uh, people had very little information on uh, that there is good plastic and bad plastic um, so it was just seen as as a bad word and then uh, you know uh, people were ready to to shun a brand which they uh, loved all all these years uh, amazingly so in almost 100 countries around the world um, so what do you do if you find yourself to be a leader of such a brand um, you you need to be aware that of course uh, you know what's happening around us is uh, you know very volatile there are um, discussions happening every day there are uh, new regulations that could come out in a single day uh, with very little reaction time um, and there could be conversations happening on social media which you have absolutely no control over um, what do you do and and how do you react how do you make decisions which are not just good for the short term but really are good at a strategic level good for the long term interest um, of a brand uh, as well um, but this is not just about my business it was you know something i was seeing across uh, you spoke to anybody in any industry in any function any country and they would tell you that you know it's so volatile um it's it's volatile in the government today you know which used to be one of the most stable um you know sectors it's it's volatile um in in functions which uh, you know had had relatively um uh, calm and and a sense of you know longevity in terms of things not changing fast enough but if you look at not just it uh you look at sales you look at marketing you look at even hr i think one of the most disrupted uh functions today is hr who would have thought that that you know uh the circumstances would turn a function a stable function like that completely um you know on its head and and it's become so dynamic so interesting so different um but if you look at it from say a practitioner's point of view or somebody who's a consumer um of uh, those products or services you would see that it's reflected the volatility the uncertainty the complexity the ambiguity and on one hand we have all of these and on the other you have fierce competition um people have um you know attention spans of less than 10 seconds uh in terms of your consumer uh, they are looking at uh, you know different expectations from brands and as as somebody who either runs a business or is inside of a company running a business i think these are things which we have to deal with we can't run away from these and that's where quick decision making is needed study of trends is needed today nobody is really making five year plans because who knows what will happen in five years then it had come down to three years but now it's more like let's do a one year concrete plan and review it by the quarter um and be on top of our game and if you have to show agility like that and if you have to win in these circumstances not just market share but but fight to keep your job to to grow and get promoted um to be recognized and be visible as a brand i think for all of these what you need is an em uh, in practice and not just at the leadership cxo levels but all through the organization the second thing is that you know the skills required at the workplace are changing and they're not changing by the year honestly they are changing by the month sometimes by the day um i don't expect you to read this is fine print but just to get a sense that what this diagram is trying to exhibit is that you know we need to be prepared for a different reality uh when we go to work or when we think of you know running a business um the so diverse uh, some of it is not even in practice today right and and this is something that we um, will need to be cognizant of as we plan our careers as we plan life um that you know it's no longer about an iq uh people are talking about eq emotional quotient they're talking about pq what's your passion quotient they're talking about lq what's your leadership quotient and in in the absence of you know really having clear frameworks or direction um we have to really play it by the ear and this is where we need to be very very certain of uh, the fact that we need to be entrepreneurial we need to think on our feet 
uh, we need to not waste time. We need to be grabbing with both hands in terms of new things that are hitting us, whether it's technology, whether it's, uh, you know, nuances in terms of even the old subjects that we read and studied. Um, it's really time to unlearn and learn uh, again for each and every one of us. And that really is a symptom that you are exhibiting EM if you're already doing that. Innovation, creativity, speed, um, this is what the world will uh, tell us to do. And, and we have to be prepared for that. Another reason, um, you know, which is very interesting, uh, as I talk to especially a lot of young people, millennials, Gen Z, uh, yeah, who are coming into the organizations now and they are a big part of the workforce. Uh, big purchasing power sits with them. Um, a lot of them are in favor of, of course, joining the gig economy, being their own bosses, um, living life and, and forming experiences uh, as a way of living life rather than being stuck in, uh, you know, jobs for several years at a time, especially in one domain, one industry, one company. And, uh, and this is where uh, if, we, if we can, you know, imagine ourselves to be one day a part of that um, gig economy, um, we'll need to have entrepreneurial mindset uh, as, as a basic uh, for us. Uh, because to show flexibility, to show continuous learning without anybody sort of putting a gun to your head to do that, uh, being very self-motivated, self-driven and grabbing opportunities uh, before others. I think these are going to be um, things which will be driving us um, constantly, especially as more and more people join the gig economy. So whatever it is that you are doing today, um, you know, after the session, sit back and reflect that what is it that I can do to speed up my agility, um, enhance it, to, to learn things which I, uh, you know, fear learning, uh, to embrace newness with adventure and a spirit of fun and excitement rather than dread uh, and then fear. Um, so that's, that's where I think it will become um, very, very important for all of us. And, and then the next logical question is that, you know, not all of us could be blessed with it. Can we develop it or is it innate? Now, some things are innate in all of us. Right? Uh, we are born with it. We are blessed to have it. Um, some things come far easier to us compared to others. But the good thing is that like with anything else, this is a learnable skill. Um, and I really say that it's a skill. Um, it's also an attitude that you can sort of develop. Um, but it does require intentional effort to do that. So why this webinar today? Um, was important uh, in the first month of the year and thanks for Beyond Diversity for bringing this up as a topic of discussion is that, you know, all of us need it, but we also need uh, a template or, or some ideas, tips, tricks to be able to, to develop this intentionally in the rest of the year. So one of the first things, and we'll continue with the R theme that I showed you earlier today, again, is that, uh, Contemplate, and this is where you can make some notes, that find your reason to exist. What is your North Star? What is your purpose? This, if answered honestly, truthfully, can be one of the biggest reasons for you um, to show up very differently in the year 2020. Without this, there will be a feeling of overwhelm, of distraction, of getting lost, of too many people trying to push you into their agendas, rather than you doing things which bring out the best version of you. So, so this is something which would be the first one on my list for sure. The second is that uh, set goals and revisit your goals daily. This is a very big sign of somebody who exhibits EM that they not only have goals, concrete goals, but they look at them constantly, they think about them, they obsess over them. And this is very, very important because this is where your inspiration comes from. Motivation is very external. You know, you have to sit and wait for somebody to come in and motivate you perhaps. But if you have goals and you revisit them, you will inspire yourself daily. <clears throat> the third thing is to remove distractions with a routine. 
Now, as simple as it sounds, I think this is one of the most powerful, um, I would say, elements in really driving towards an entrepreneurial mindset. Um, think of a routine that works for you. And uh, my routine and your routine, of course, would look very different. Um, but there are certain ways. And when I consult with my clients today, and a lot of them are founders, overwhelmed founders of startups, some of them are even CEOs of legacy traditional companies, and some are young professionals who I mentor. I think this is one of the things that we work on in common for everybody. That let's look at your routine. Is it reflective of the priorities that you have? Right. And then it is already helpful to remove distractions once your priorities are clear and you know what time of the day needs to be uh, for what action. The fourth thing which I highly recommend and we saw in Oprah's case as well uh, that, uh, you know, deep relationships go a long way. So don't just know people uh, on social media. Look at really who is that ideal person who could be somebody who would add to you in different ways, uh, personally, professionally. And then look at how can you deepen your relationship. Even if it's a few people, it's a great start. Hold on to your friends, uh, value family. These are a given. But apart from that, how do you expand your network so that your net worth starts to reflect basis your network, deepen your relationships? The next one is to search, seek mentors, positive role models. Uh, if you don't have a mentor or a coach, look at someone in the family, a friend, someone you look up to even outside of your work, um, who could be that role model, you could take advice from, confide in, um, help you to, um, to make you know, a path for yourself, uh, which can really model after all the goals that you want to achieve. Read every day for growth. I think being a learner is something we spoke about. Being a rapid learner is even better. And I think reading, um, if it's books, amazing. But I think uh, absorbing is uh, very essential. So whether it's podcasts, whether it's webinars, and I'm glad you are on this webinar and I congratulate you for taking out time here and thank you for doing that as well. Um, because I think this shows that you're already taking your own development in your hands but do that consistently. Make time for rest and recharge a priority. I think Ariana Huffington has started to speak a lot about the thrive philosophy. We don't just need to survive, but we need to thrive in life. I think recharging keeps you agile. It uh, keeps you very stable, uh, brings the balance back, which you need to react quickly on things, to respond in a balanced way. Um, so, so do that, um, I think, and do that more intentionally and mindfully. Um, and the eighth one is something, uh, you know, I actually have it as, as a poster on my office that run out of your comfort zone. Don't just step out of your comfort zone, but run out of your comfort zone. Um, because this is where uh, things start to keep us, uh, you know, uh, in our history, rather than letting us step into the future that is waiting for us. So, so this is something that I, I highly recommend. The ninth is build a reputation of adding value. Um, I also talk a lot about personal brand and uh, how you can augment it. I think uh, there are different ways you can uh, be seen as somebody who has the rep reputation of adding value to other people. And this is something that again, requires time. It requires effort. It requires you to make uh, a plan around it. Um, but more than anything else, I think it, it really starts from the heart that, that you genuinely have a desire of seeing others um, be better off as a result of something you do. Um, but build a reputation around that for this year. And the last one is also, um, you know, very interesting. Something I wish, you know, like you see in kids, more of us adults do all the time is to ask curious questions. Um, we don't have all the answers today, especially the pace at which the world around us is changing. Um, I learned from, from you know, my, my son, children around us, um, because, you know, they are born in a, in a different reality and the way they see things, their eyes, the lens with which they view is very different from perhaps what I would view. 
a millennial would see it differently, a Gen Z would see it differently, a baby boomer would see it differently, even though there are tags on us. But like I said, Richard Branson would be a 70 year old Gen Z because of just his attitude. And I think that's where the curiosity uh, bit comes in of keeping us young at heart, um, keeping us uh, more and more informed and, and helping us to make choices which are learned choices rather than random choices. So these 10 things are really interesting. Um, they are quite a package. Um, don't attempt to maybe, you know, look at prioritizing all 10 of them at one shot. You might already be great at some of these. Look at, you know, what could be maybe the three highest impact points out of this list for you. If you start to adopt that in your own life and lifestyle, what is it that you could get back? If that is really high impact, I would urge that start with just three out of this list and then keep expanding quarter on quarter till the time you feel that you have achieved what you, is, uh, your, you feel is needed to, to really win in the year 2020, right? So these are some actionable points I wanted you to take away from the webinar today. Let's now have a quick look at what all we have discussed in the last 40 odd minutes. Um, we went through what is an entrepreneurial mindset, my definition of EM, and how to recognize it, all the 10 R's that you had seen at that point in time. Um, the second thing we spoke about was some inspirational figures who are inspiring us with their own example of living with the entrepreneurial mindset, changing adversity to prosperity, and being relentless in moving on in life and continuing to win year after year. The third thing we discussed and reflected upon was why is it that we all need EM in today's times, irrespective of who we are, what we do, and what we want to achieve in the future. And the last, how can we develop EM to win in the year 2020, which was also the topic of the webinar today. So with that, I come to the end of uh, my presentation and I am excited to hear your questions, reflections, and learning from you as well and your thoughts on the topic today. So Nancy, over to you. And sure. Thank you so much, uh, Shilpa. I think this has been very insightful. Um, this whole perspective of not looking entrepreneurship as a profession or as a way of life, but rather as a mindset and no matter what, or which walk of life we are in, how can we develop this to sort of accelerate our growth? So thank you so much for giving those perspectives and insights. Uh, before people type in a few questions, I was actually wondering my, to myself, you know, while I was hearing your session, and probably I'll take a few questions with, uh, which I have, and then possibly people can type in and we can take them as well. Sure. Uh, so Shilpa, tell me, uh, were you always an entrepreneur? Uh, when did you realize you wanted to be one and uh, what and you know what were the few steps that you took once you realized you wanted to chart this path of life um, thanks Nancy firstly for the opportunity to speak to your audience today and uh, this is a very interesting question um, when I reflect back I think I was um, always entrepreneurial in my approach to life and what I did um, like I said that, uh, you know, for almost uh, two decades and more, I, I was a professional working in a corporate scenario, right? Um, I was fortunate to have been a part of very entrepreneurial organizations uh, where we had really a startup mentality, even though we had scaled up um, and had become, um, you know, big and process oriented and, and multinational. Um, but I think, uh, you know, that sort of rubbed off on me. Um, and innately, I, I was somebody who was excited about learning new things, um, adapting to uh, changes around me, um, looking at uh, role models and getting inspired and seeing that what could we do, uh, which they are able to do and, and produce that success. So I think unknowingly, without even, you know, thinking or giving it tags, whether it was entrepreneurial behavior or not, um, I think that zest for life, um, that adventure and that uh, willingness to give it all one had um, to win uh, and to make the organization win uh, was perhaps my first 
exposure to the uh, to the entrepreneurial way of life and uh, and as i i neared almost a quarter of century of corporate experience i started to see that all the success that i had in my life i was fortunate and blessed to have um my feeling was that i want to share that experience that expertise um um that uh, whole learning uh, with with the younger generation um uh, you know and like i said the the you know smaller brands the startups of today will be the mega corporations of tomorrow so i said why not have another journey which is as i say it my journey from success to significance and that's where uh, i decided to turn entrepreneur myself um and walk the walk uh not just the talk um uh, and i'm having fun doing it i think it's really um uh, amazing it's a different experience exciting and challenging um but that's where i think having an entrepreneurial mindset helped me make the transition also much faster sure thank you so much shilpa i must also say that you have a great gift of gab the way you beautifully put in words is wonderful another thing or skill to learn from you just said success to significance i think you beautifully put in words at the right place uh, thank you so much we're getting in some nice um, good uh, uh, you know testimonials and uh, uh, thank yous from people i'll read them aloud uh, but we'll take one last question from the audience uh, which is from deepthi she says you mentioned going back and forth between 30 feet and 30000 feet did you face any challenges in changing leadership styles to cater to the different perspectives um what an interesting question firstly uh, i have to really think you know because after a while um you sort of get on auto mode and uh, and what you're doing is responding to a situation and trying to to you know uh, respond to it in the best way that you know uh, without contemplating that is this a micro detail i'm looking at or is this the big picture that i am uh, after the advantage of course was that i built my career rolling up my sleeves uh, working in the trenches and and really seeing things up close um, you know and personal at the 30 feet level so when you have uh, you know shared blood sweat and tears Uh, in the early stages which i highly recommend for for anybody um i think uh, i never built a career sitting uh, in an ivory tower so so really uh, putting myself and throwing myself fully at situations perhaps helped me to appreciate the level of detail that needs to go into building uh, anything business organization brand person uh, people teams right um uh, and i think uh, that intuitively sort of uh, uh became a part of me uh, but what was perhaps more difficult to acquire was uh, you know getting the strategic vision the ability to constantly see the big picture or to imagine a different scenario which does not even exist today i think that was tougher but over a period of time as you expose yourself um to to things outside of your domain and that's where interaction with people outside of your own industry or function is so critical i think it just gives you that insight that there is so much more out there um so so i think after a while it was not so difficult to to move between one or the other but of course as you become more senior you are looking at the more strategic big picture things um but you should always have that appreciation of the 30 feet uh, you know view because most people are seeing it at, at that level um so so i think i've been blessed to sort of have the feet on the ground and and keep my my eyes on the stars at the same time thank you shilpa and we are honored to have you had for the session today uh, amazing feedback i'll just read them out ring it ring it aloud so that you also know where what people are talking about it Uh, unfortunately we are at the end of the session so we'll not be able to take in more questions but i think uh, uh, shilpa is very active on social media please feel free to uh, sort of follow her and ask her questions there and she'll be happy to take it uh, mahima says thank you so much for a beautiful session uh, amazing perspective and quick takeaways thank you so much sonia even i learned a lot from you in 2020 session i think this is your mentee arti dheer who is raving yet again um feel even more charged up for 2020 em simplified so well great content and enormous takeaways thank you 
so yes people are appreciating the session and they uh, really enjoyed and they are they have some takeaways with them once again thank you so much shilpa for joining us for the webinar today thank you participants we love bringing these webinars to you and will continue to do so uh, please do continue on your path to leadership and we'll continue bringing in this uh, great speakers and content to you thank you everyone thank you nancy and team beyond diversity keep up the good work kudos and uh, good luck everybody go out and make things happen all the best thank you bye bye